small bird trapped in it. Ah. So that'll be where it's coming from. And what, um, what would a small bird in wheel indicate? Uh, not quite sure. Um, it's going to have to go on the ramp to find out. So welcome to episode two. In episode one, we had a really good look around the outside of the car with Miles, discussed some of the mechanical things you should be looking for and had a look under the bonnet. In this episode, we're going to be going for a test drive and discussing, well, everything you should be doing and listening for. And then we're going to get it up on the ramp and have a good look underneath the car. Right, so we're going to go for a test drive with Miles, who actually knows more about cars than I do, rather than me just kicking tyres and going, it seems to work. So Debatable. <laughs> hopefully. First thing, we've got a locking wheel nuts, which, what did you do with that? Well, I pulled that out of here. Um, the first thing you do is you go around a corner with that tucked in any of these little cubby holes or in your glove box. It's going to roll around and make noises, which will make you think, oh, hang on, there's something that I can't find. So go around, find any little random bits and bobs, take them out and put them somewhere they're not going to rattle. Um, give you a much better idea of what the car's like. So this is actually quite a good point we can test our... Yeah, noises. quick suspension test. So whether you're on a country road, you can find some drain covers, uh, You've depending on what you've got around you for your test drive. If you want to find a few lumps and bumps and decent corners, um, the drain covers are a great idea because you might hear anti-roll bars knocking, um, drop links, those kind of things with little bushings and ball joints that will, you know, once your suspension's at full extension, will make a right old noise. Um, Is so, it quite obvious if you've got something like that, what sort of noise would you expect? Is it like a clunk, a yeah, grinding? Yeah, you, you hear like a clunking noise, yeah, a clunk, clunk, whatever you want to call it. So hit this with a bit of vigour and you'll get an idea of um, if we've got anything. So that sounds pretty good. Nothing untoward there. It seems that this is a better example. We're not likely to be able to pick up as many things. The suspension does feel like it will damps very well. Um, obviously you want to feel for any corners that are yeah, a little bit bouncy. Uh, you can do that also when you're outside of the car by just pushing down on each corner um, and you'll see if one, one side decides to bounce back up again aggressively, you'll find that you've obviously got a damper that's not doing its job properly. Yeah. Um, so we'll go into some bit of faster roads. So what, what's a good... What what should you be listening for, do you think, on sort of faster roads? Is general? Well, you want to make sure you can not feel any jerks or anything during the, uh, you know, during acceleration, um, you know, showing that you've got a misfire. Uh, another thing that I'd always recommend somebody does, if you go to look at or buy a car, always make sure the car is fully cold when you first get it started up. Um, so you want to start from cold. See, that... Um, it's like I can't drive, which um, I might be me. Yeah, I think I think that's more likely to be dual mass flywheel. Um, and they a modern car thing. Essentially, it's an, it's sort of a normal flywheel and clutch plate. They're for people that can't drive. Um, that's what they're designed for to take out the the harsh transition in the drivetrain. Um, Instead of just people dropping the clutch as if it's a, an on and off switch, which as you probably have seen, lots of people do that. Um, it's just a there are springs built in to slow that movement down and stop the shock through the drivetrain. Um, so the, the flywheel has a set of springs in it which will absorb that. It's like suspension in your drivetrain. Yeah, almost. so it's better um, for the car but not necessarily for the driver. No, if you know how to drive, you're looking for a bike point, you find that bike point, go to pull away and technically there's a second one. So if you treat it like an animal, the likelihood is you'll seem like you're a better driver, <laughs> which is wrong. If you've got mechanical sympathy and know what to do, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of the or your intuition teaches you wrong so it could well just be that <laughs> so we're we'll get up to speed limits at 70 and we'll seems perfectly smooth there's no nasty noises I've got no you're not feeling any wheel wobble no another thing to test is under braking yeah um, we'll get past this car if you've got a warped disc or something like that or you've got a you know a sticky piston, you'll probably find that you end up with a bit of wheel wobble from one side. So if I just yep, yeah, car pulls up pretty straight. There's no nasty no, wobbling no, then. A little bit there, but I don't know whether that's a little bit. I feel it juddering ever it so was very minor, but yeah, that that is something that you'd look at if you you've got the luxury of putting a car on a ramp. Um, you get the opportunity to you know, spin each wheel individually and that will probably show you if there's anything yeah. untoward. Okay, so let's go around this roundabout then we can... And the car feels...
feels like it pulls really well. Um, doesn't seem to be struggling for power. So, slow speed, slight what 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 noise yeah, from the it does, it back. Yeah, it does sound like there could be a, a slightly warped disc there. Yeah. Um, Which might, I suppose, the fact when I was braking you lower down, you've got a slight, you feel it. ever so slight. Yeah, it only needs to be minor, but you'll yeah. definitely feel it. Um, Car seems to turn all right. Have you have you checked tire pressures? Another thing to always go by. No. Yeah. So I've literally picked it up, done hardly anything, and just driven it down. And driven it down. I have. I've probably done 50 miles on dual code and I've, the fuel consumption seems to be a bit iffy. In which case, yeah, we shall plug her in yeah. and uh, try and suss out what's causing that. Uh, excessive fuel consumption can be a lot of things. Um, always start by being simple a lot of people are frightened of going yeah let's plug a car in and pay a diagnostic fee of say 65 pounds is kind of normal um however that can soon save you that in fuel yeah um, believe it or not press that so it's in so it's 21.7 stupid 21.7 litres per 100 miles. miles which i think i worked out about 18 to the gallon for yes. a two litre engine pretty dire um that's about the same as my V10 M6 was getting, um, yeah. so and round town. So that's that's not right. There's something <laughs> that it's unhappy with there. So it could be just picking up and it's on a cold start, for example. So it's got coolant temp sensor to the ECU is reading incorrectly. Yeah. Um, it's obviously giving you the right the right thing on the on the dial there. So you can see it's temperature looks in the middle. Looks yeah. okay now. We've been driving around. Quite often, cars will have one that goes to your dash and one that picks up and goes to your ECU. They're not always the same, um, so the feeds can be from different places. So although everything looks fine, it might not actually be reading correctly. Yeah. Um, it could be that, it could be a lambda sensor, um, a downstream lambda that's picking up, you know, all, you know, the car needs to be having more fuel in it. It's not the sort of thing that you could find out as a, a, nor a normal buyer like you me. Can't just, not really no, you can't just noted. poke around. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a smart thing to do is have a little look at what the current consumption is, ask them what kind of driving they've been doing and see whether that ties in, you know, once yeah. you've done your research and see whether that actually makes sense. Um, so there's a there's a quite a few simple things you can do to try and suss out whether the car is doing what it should do. Seems to pull nice. I mean, gear, mm. gears are... Gear change is nice and it slick. It seems ever so smooth, yeah. yeah. Squeak, annoying squeaky clutch, which is... A little blast of um, GT85 <laughs> to lubricate that. Probably solve, the, solve that on the linkage, so that won't be a big, a so big would cost. So you, would you say when you're test driving you should worry about, say, the stereo works or air conditioning works, or should that be done? That kind of stuff I do when you're stationary. A, it means that you get to concentrate more on what, what you're doing whilst you're driving always want silence in the car really so um, you can hear anything that's going on um, don't drive the car with the stereo on try and turn the blowers off if, if you can um, so you don't have the heater going or anything like that um, if you, you get the opportunity to obviously run with the windows down at a slow speed because that you'll pick up anything like okay. the little brake we can um, do that in a minute, yeah. exactly you can just hear those things a little bit better um, and if you can take somebody else with you um, because even if they don't know anything about cars, where you're sat in the car, the resonance will make things sound like, oh, hang on, your rear left is making a noise, or the, but actually it's the front right. Oh, uh, okay. So it's just how the, the car's um, well, resonance or uh, you know, the audio in the car works. Um, but overall, I'd say this, this feels pretty tight, um, from the passenger seat at least. Yeah, which will not get you to have a little drive in a minute as well so yeah, be <coughs> I suppose as well like, making sure you like the car as well that's another big thing yeah I mean hopefully you've got to the stage where you've done all your research people will buy cars for many different reasons whether it's your MPG whether it's the space whether it's room for a dog whether it's the fact that you can crash it into things and not care <laughs> whether it's you know performance figures there's so many different reasons to buy a car so by the time you're actually going to test drive one you should have a pretty good idea that you're buying something that's, that fits the bill it's just finding one that isn't as rotten as a pear um, and uh, you know works as well as you can expect it to again there's you've got to tailor your expectations to your budget as well um, we have a lot of people come along and think you know even though the car says it's original and is 50 years old um, they are 
doesn't have fresh paint and it's you know it's well if you wanted a fully restored one you can have one but it's going to be twice as much yeah um so you sort of you don't go out and waste people's time looking for a car that you can't afford um which does happen a lot <laughs> there are <laughs> Uh, and there are other expectations. You're looking at a car, I don't know what this one will be worth, two grand, something like that. Um, it's never going to be 100% perfect. Um, oh, look, it's got stone chips and it's got a parking dent. Well, you know, it's 20 years old and has done 80,000 miles. Of course it will. Yeah. So those kind of things are to be expected, but you want to make sure that mechanically uh, and electrically the car is sound because they're the things that are going to kick you. Um, especially if you're using it as a daily driver, it's not a toy, you can't afford to have it off the road and be fixing it all the time. You want your big ticket items to work exactly as intended. So if I'm going slower... Yeah, can you hear a slight knock? Yeah. Oh, it's actually continual. Another simple trick is, if you're feeling brave, run along outside the car, get somebody to hop out see what, where they can hear it from. So front left sounds like it's got a, a small bird trapped in it. Ah. So that'll be where it's coming from. And what, um, what would a small bird in wheel indicate? Uh, not quite sure. Um, it's going to have to go on the ramp to find out. Yeah. It, it could be brakes, it could be as simple as the pads moving in the ca carrier yeah. sometimes o ones that aren't OEM won't fit exactly right and they will move slightly you can feel tracking slightly out yeah um, cars I think are supposed to pull in the UK to the left ever so slightly obviously it would be the right everywhere else just so that if you were to fall asleep at the wheel you go off and not into the oncoming yeah. traffic um, and it should only be a tiny bit whether it's like you know half a degree or something like that this one is pulling to the left but quite a lot more um, yeah. it's wanting to travel over on its own feel quite a lot of, sort of roughness through the steering wheel so it could be a cv joint um, on one of your drive shafts something like that that's making that knocking noise but we'll have to get it in the air yeah. take obviously all the, the load off of it in order to be able to spin it and try and suss out where that's coming from um yeah gear shift is lovely um brakes feel positive we've got plenty of bite to them this, this is the thing, isn't it? You've got someone like me who knows, you know, I drive lots of cars, a lot of new cars, and you don't have this knowledge and mechanical understanding necessarily that you do. Yeah, they should do. always work as they should. I mean, yeah. again, feeling like a strong brake pedal when you get to the bottom of the travel, it shouldn't continue to push to the floor. It shouldn't feel soggy, so to speak. Um, if it does, then the likelihood you've got some air in the system. Um, again, all of this kind of stuff can be answered. Oh, there we go. Gosh, she's got some. She's got some spice. <laughs> it goes a lot better than I was expecting. Really? Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, I don't want to burn all your fuel up, but that's yeah. She goes really well. Um, the age of the car as well. There's I mean, no no misfires or anything like that. No. Um, lock change is smooth. It's lovely. Um, we comfortable, can, wouldn't it? It's, it's really yeah, comfortable. It's a cracking car. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you can do all the. You know, checks and tests you know like I say if you've got heated seats air conditioning all that kind of stuff just sit in the car park and test all of those make sure all your windows work make sure your door handles work in the back because you'll get someone in there and someone hasn't told you there's a snap door handle cable and you're like oh sorry Janet but you're stuck in the back for the rest of the afternoon because you can't move to the other side um, so yeah all those things are worth you know giving a check over again all of your lights really simple stuff but they'll fail you, fail you an MOT um, and then we get onto the big questions, rust and things like that. Um, I would tend to do all of those things first before you go to go and do a test drive. Um, you'd hear the car start from cold. A lot of a lot of cheeky people won't let you hear a cold start because if a car is running like a bag of spanners, once it's warmed up, they all run a lot better. So a cold start is a must. Um, and I know those. The electric windows work this side. Well, they work all round, but those switches on that side, the door, don't work, other okay. than your one. So it could well be a switch pack yeah. issue there, or it could even be a fuse. Um, again, until you start investigating, it's hard to tell. Should you, do you think, check, is it, go for the simple first, so try a fuse at yeah, of course, two pound yeah. or something well, rather you're than... you're normally able to pull a fuse out and tell whether it's right or it's wrong. Yeah. So. 
it isn't you, you won't even have to pay for one if I mean yeah if it isn't if it isn't gone um, they're normally really simple to see so but always yes keep it simple stupid start with the fuse first and work backwards yeah. um, hopefully it's not a module because they can be expensive um, and quite often irritating to fit because they're not designed to be taken in and out <laughs> um, don't ask me how I know <laughs> um, but yeah you always, always start with the simple stuff first overall it drives really well um, again even having little things like smashed mirrors all that kind of stuff it's all simple but it's all an equation you're going to have to to factor in do i need to replace these items how much do i want to spend with my budget does it need paint work do i need to you know again if you're looking at hypercar supercar stuff am i looking for perfection or do i want something that i can buy a bit cheaper and spend some time on it yeah, yeah i felt that then felt a little bit loose in the front end so once it's on the ramp We'll get the pry bars out and try and see what we've got. You might just find there's a you know a couple of ball joints that are on their way out. Yeah. Again, handbrake, check that. That seems all right. Um, it holds up nice and tight. Car doesn't want to roll anywhere. Um, it idles perfectly. You know, there's no jumps. It's not hunting, looking for revs. Um, make sure that it's not overheating. It isn't. So there's there's a lot to lot to look at, but it's all simple stuff. You want to get the important simple things done first. Um, and this car has pretty much passed the test. Right, up on the ramp now. Let's have a look underneath. Let's have a closer look at um, you know, what you're likely to find on a you know, used car. Um, obviously, you're going to see a lot of surface corrosion. Now, it's not always structural. It's not always deathly. It doesn't mean the car should be written off. Um, it's, there are certain points at which you've got to look for it where it can cause that trouble, um, such as your subframe mounts. Um, some cars are known to crack here, um, and obviously that would be an MOT failure, and obviously it would be quite dangerous should the whole thing decide to um, you know, separate from the rest of the car. This is in good condition, other than you can see these bushes here perishing. Um, so they'll be on the on the list to replace. Yeah, they're crumbling. Yeah, yeah, they they've decided they've had enough. They don't want to be bushes anymore. Uh, handbrake cable is in all right condition. Again, quite a lot of the time we see the outer casings come away and it's really rusty and crusty. Um, again, can cause you problems with MOTs. Um, anti roll bar bushes are actually in good condition. However, I've noticed you've got more bushes here that need doing as they're perishing and you've also got a split that's on the way through um, these gators here on your drop links from your anti-roll bar are splitting and again there you go open so that yeah. would allow ingress of dirt meaning that that will become loose and eventually wear itself out um, and again give you uh, problems with an MOT. Which um, I want. Not really. Um, you can see Obviously, your exhaust mounts, uh, or yeah, the actual <laughs> bolts, don't really exist anymore. Uh, they look like they've lived under the sea for some time. But there's no exhaust gas leaking there. There's no sort of black soot, which is what you look for as a telltale sign. So they're not actually leaking because they're completely bonded together. You'll never get them off, um, but they don't need to so come off. So you have to cut it and do all kinds Yeah, of you'd have to just weld something fresh. And um, springs look. Springs have been replaced, yeah, and I think the bump stops have as well because you can yeah. see their yellow colour and they're still nice and supple. Um, again, uh, we've got bushes that want doing, um, but nothing major. The spring pans are, yeah, they're rusty and crusty, um, but I think they're actually structurally sound. They're not going to give you any trouble with an MOT. They just are, you know, that's what a car looks like when it's exposed to salty roads for a, you know, a good few years. Yeah. Again, you've got bushes up here that want doing. So basically the rear end needs a, a re refresh of its bushes in order to um, you know, make it work as it should. And you'll yeah. find the car will ride better from it too. So the exhaust, I suppose these mounts are probably... Yeah, you there. want to check exhaust mounts. Again, they're really crusty, but they're holding it and there's no, there's no evidence of blowing anywhere. Again, you've got a fresh rubber mount there. Um, so the actual exhaust itself isn't going to knock and bang about. But yeah, the uh, exhaust cat and everything will look intact. Thankfully, it hasn't been stolen, as a lot of them are getting robbed <laughs> yeah. at the moment. Um, these are your Lambda sensor probes. Uh, again, none of the wires or anything look to be frayed or, or ruined. Um, just a little bit of grass attached there. Maybe a bit of off-roading, who knows? <laughs> um, and again, much the same at the front end. Um, the guys have just fitted a fresh set of tyres on the front here. Um, so you're not going to have any troubles yeah, with those. Very perished they we, were before. Yes, the original were destroyed. And also we found that knocking, the knocking, yeah, noise, the knocking noise from the front um, has been rectified. So it was actually uh, to do with the front brakes. So the guys in the workshop have just sorted that out. 
Um, the rest seems to be in pretty good condition. Um, it's obviously, it's not pretty. It's not like you'd imagine one of our race cars or fresh builds are, but springs are good. You see there's no seeping of oil on the dampers, another thing you want to look for um, to make sure you haven't got uh, an oil leak on your dampers. Again, it wouldn't be a long time before they, they stop working. See these drop links have obviously been done recently. They're nice and fresh. Um, and it even looks like the CV boots and everything are okay. There's no, um, yeah, yeah no spits or anything in there. They look brand new as well, yeah. almost, don't they? And there's no oil, in the, yeah, no uh, grease seeping out. Um, minor oil leak, you can see coming out here. Um, you can see that the uh, oil filter is pretty much new, yeah. apart from a few watermarks from where it's been on the road. So that's you know, another sign that the uh, service has recently been done. Yeah. At least you've got the documentation for that, but another easy way to check is have a look at the oil filter. A lot of people say they've done a service and they actually haven't. If you look at that and it's rusty and crusty, <laughs> you know it hasn't been done for donkey's well. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it wouldn't be the first or last time we see that. So yeah, there are a few little oil leaks. They're not massive, um, but always nice to address them if you can. Yeah. Um, a lot of the older cars, especially British sports cars, any kind of oil leak like that is an automatic chassis protection system. So that oil being spread down the car as you drive actually protects it from rusting. Yeah. So it's, a lot of the time it's seen as the engines looking after the rest of the car. So um, a little one isn't too bad, and it also means it's getting fresh oil put in the top of it as well. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it isn't as bad as it seems, and always one drip of oil. By the time it's collected dirt and been blown down the car, one drip will look like you've lost a litre. So it always looks worse than it actually is. Um, if it was leaving a pool on the floor here, um, I'd be a lot more worried, but there hasn't been a single drip since it's been on the ramp. Um, I wouldn't have said it's too savage. Which is good. It's just obviously the fueling that we are. So the initial thoughts are the Lambda... Lambda probes, yeah. If they're picking up the wrong readings, um, it's it might be saying, oh, we're very light on fuel here, when we it, the engine actually isn't, and therefore it's telling the injectors to yeah. chuck more fuel in. Um, therefore it's running super rich, and yeah, it's going to chuck more through the through the back of the car. So we're going to get um, new ones of those, like a universal Fresh Lambda one. probes. Excuse me. <laughs> Turn that one off. I think we looked at the ones that were for the car, and they were like two hundred and seventy pounds each. And we're going to think we look at the, like the universal ones. So that's where is the lambda? It was up. Uh, lambda sensors are yeah on yeah, the okay. cats here. So you've got downstream and upstream. So before the cat up there, and yeah. this is the downstream. So it, you know within the actual catalytic converter itself, uh, which is basically just measuring the oxygen levels. Um, and then changing so the mixture, I guess. Precisely, yeah. yeah. That'll send the signal to the ECU, which will change the mixture to suit, basically, to make sure that it's not running too rich, too lean, and also isn't going to be smoking out the person behind you. And that will probably explain if it is that. Yeah, it might be chucking in port, loads of yeah. additional fuel, which, yeah, exactly, will, will cause your poor, or poor fuel economy. Yeah. It's chucking too much fuel in because it's not getting the right readings, and the ECU's doing its job. It, yeah. It's trying to trim the fuel level to suit, but obviously, if it's not getting the right readings, that will be where it's, yeah. it's falling over. I've obviously checked that, you know, there was no play on wheels at all, so I'll give them a good old Yeah, wheel shake bearings and, and everything are all okay. Um, obviously brakes and everything work exactly as they should. Um, so really, it, it's quite healthy bar a few bushes and bits and bobs. Um, again, even just checking that all your wheel, wheel arch liners are in place, having all these, you know, little um, screws holding them in. Yeah. So many cars have had these ripped out or left and it allows dirt and whatnot to get into the body and into electrical components. And yeah, it won't do them any good whatsoever. People are oh yeah, I never even noticed it wasn't there. Um, it'll mean your ride's less refined, but also, yeah, it opens the car up to, to getting loads and loads of cack into places yeah. it's not designed to go. Um, same for your inner covers here as well, which just stop, you know, if you go through big puddles, everything getting inside the engine bay, it needs, it ideally wants to be clean in there. You don't want stuff getting in. No, exactly. Um, so Overall, I think it seems pretty good if we can sort out the fueling. There's um, not too that much would be to attend to. Brilliant. Um, the De fact it's been ser it looks like it's been serviced recently. The oil, possible oil leak, but like it's, we said, we'll keep it. It's an not eye too on major. It. Yeah, keep yeah. an eye on it. I mean, even if you just look, you know, once a week and see how much has disappeared. If you, I mean, if you're getting rid of, you know, a litre a week, then you've got a problem. If yeah. it's a litre a month, then yeah, you probably want to start looking at it. Um, if it's a litre a year, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, some of the high performance cars, M3s, M5s, things like that, will do a litre every thousand miles. Um, they just chew through yeah. it. That's just what they do. So it's not untoward to use some oil. Um, you don't want it all falling out or getting through too much. No. But I think you'll be all right.
Right, that's cool. Um, brilliant. So that's hopefully we've taught people things. You've we've covered a a few, yeah, we've covered a few things. Um, we haven't really shown people what to do in order to try and find if there's any play. Um, obviously, as simple as you know, giving the wheels a good shake from side to side both ways. Normally, if you've got both hands and you'll be able to see if there's any play in the wheel bearings, you can hear if things are grindy and if the if the wheels spin freely like that. If there's any points at which they bind up, then you know there's a problem somewhere. Um, Worth looking at the ABS rings to see if they, you know, they expand, get in, it's sort of engorged over time, um, and that again can cause problems with um, ABS and traction control faults, things like that. It'll put the car in limp mode. Um, so wheel speed sensors um, that go onto them, just like this one here, they can they can die over time, um, and uh, yeah, those those little items just because they will touch. Um, as they expand over time, especially rear-wheel drive cars seem to suffer with it more, I don't know why, um, but that will make quite a difference. Again, checking drive shafts, you know, getting your hand in there, giving it a good move around, seeing if there's any play. If it waggles, you know, if it's gonna knock, you'll soon tell that they need a rebuild. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is for dummies, really. If you've got a pry bar, ideally, you wanna have a little feel of all your um, arms, and you see they should move freely. Um, not knock, you want to know that there's nothing going to move around. You I say, ideally you want a pry bar, but if you can feel metal on metal and there's any knocking noises, you know that there's a, a joint there that needs replacing um, yeah. or a bush that needs doing. So it's all simple stuff, but just get involved, feel everything. If it's your own car and you've got time to have it on the ramp, go through all the bolts, make sure they're all you know to the correct spec and torque. It's not hard to do, but it's peace of mind for yourself. Yeah, um, no, I, I for yeah. one, wouldn't hop in a car and drive it happily if I didn't know either myself or one of the, the guys that works here has done the bolts up to talk. Yeah. Um, most people don't think about their wheel bolts, but how many times do you check them? Most don't, people, yeah, yeah um, never. No. You trust the garage. Um, it's not untoward that the garage forget. They get called onto another job and don't talk your wheel bolts up. So it's something that is simple, but all it takes is a Quick five minute job. Most cars have got their wheel spanner in the back of the back of the car, you know, so that you can do it, change the spare wheel. Yeah. Just give them a tweak. Um, it. It's simple stuff, but it could save your life. Yeah. So I think we've covered everything. Hopefully people have learnt something. I've so I'm saying I've learnt a load from doing this. Um, and we'll get it back in once we've ordered parts of the Lambda, the bushes. Yeah, we can get that done. watch and beam put in. Exactly, we'll do that. A bit of operation. Detailing as well, because you do detailing down we here. We do indeed, yes. We've got Andy, our full-time valeter and detailer, uh, who's come from main dealership yeah. stuff. So uh, like the car that you might just see in there, shining beautifully. Yeah. Um, that's one that he did earlier. So yeah, you lovely. can take a car that's never had a bath in its life um, and make it look like it's well better than it would have come in the showroom. So oh, yeah, we'll definitely arrange it. I think that would we'll be really definitely interesting. Definitely that before and after. I think oh, will be fantastic. Yes. So um, we give our guys an idea as to you know what can be done. Yeah. No matter how bad you think your paintwork is, and it makes the car a lot easier to look after as well. Once that paintwork's super smooth, all the dirt falls off of it, yeah. so you don't have Perfect. to put as much effort in. Um, so yeah, we'll give that a go next time and. Um, Hopefully, you'll have a lovely car at the end of it. Fab. Well, hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed that different look at it. It's going to be useful. More to come with the car. We still haven't got a name for her yet, so we'll have to come up with that. Put in the comments down below. So that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And remember to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.